in this video you will know exactly what happens when you have high blood prolactin levels. Hi there, Dr. Bandera here. This is your medicine, nutrition and exercise channel and today we are going to review in depth what happens when you have high blood levels of prolactin. What is prolactin? You will know. As you will know what are the consequences of having high levels of prolactin in your blood. But before we start with today's video, don't forget to subscribe to this new channel. I have another channel in Spanish, but this is a new channel in English. Please subscribe and support these videos. I really appreciate it. High prolactin levels are really, really common and their consequences are not really well understood. But before you understand what are the consequences, or health problems related to it, we have to understand a few things. We have to understand what is prolactin, what is the hormone prolactin and what is its function, okay? Prolactin, if you think about it, its name allows us to know its function. Prolactin is an hormone device to produce milk in the mammary gland. But we have to know, we have to discover where prolactin is produced, where it's generated and in that respect we have to show you some areas of the brain involved in prolactin production. The first one is the hypothalamus in the base of the brain and the other one is the pituitary gland or hypophysis and in this pituitary gland we have anterior pituitary gland and posterior pituitary gland. First of all, and we are here trying to understand an axis, an axis is a group of hormones that interrelate between each other, an axis, hypothalamus, hypophysis or pituitary mammary axis, okay? We have two hormones here in the hypothalamus, one is dopamine and the other is TRH, thyrotropic releasing hormone. Dopamine also is called PIF, P-I-F, prolactin inhibiting factor and TRH stimulate prolactin. But prolactin is produced below the hypothalamus, it's produced in the hypophysis gland, the pituitary gland, completely in a group of cells that are called lactotrope cells, lactotrope cells that produce prolactin. One of the strongest stimulus of prolactin production is nipple suction by the child, by the child that is lactating, that is taking milk from the mother. So stimulation of the nipple produces a stimulus, a reflex to the pituitary gland that produces prolactin. Okay, and the main function of prolactin is, as I've said before, production of milk. Milk in the mammary gland that is a modified apocrine gland. Prolactin is stimulating the glandular tissue of the breast, the production of milk, milk's production. So that's its main function, that its main goal of prolactin. And now we will go through all the symptoms high levels of prolactins can produce in the body. And we will divide, we will consider three different populations. The first one is premenopausic woman, that is fertile woman. Then we will consider postmenopausic woman, woman after menopause. And then we will consider males because we are a little bit different than females in this problem. We have different symptoms and 
we have to be considered separately uh, than women. Okay, starting with premenopause women. The first thing and the more important thing that we have to consider here is that prolactin, when its concentration is high, inhibits one hormone, one important hormone that is produced in the hypothalamus that is called gonadotropic releasing hormone. Oh yes, gonadotropic releasing hormone secreted by the hypothalamus is inhibited by prolactin. And what are the consequences of that? Gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates in the anterior pituitary gland the releasing of FSH, follicular stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone. Both hormones stimulate another glands. Okay? And that glands are the ovaries. The ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone thanks to the action of FSH and LH. So when prolactin is high, gonadotropin releasing hormone is out of game. That means that we have low concentration of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and we have low concentration of estrogens and progesterone. So we have an hypogonadal state. We don't have enough of steroid sexual steroid hormones, okay? And that will cause almost every symptom in women and males. As we have diminished concentrations of gonadotropins, we have aminuria that is loss of menses, irregular menses, or loss of menses. We have no menses or oligomenorrhea. That is irregular menses, menses that are farther and farther apart from each other than a normal woman, and uh, or aminorrhea that is loss of menses. We don't have menses anymore vaginal dryness because of the lack of estrogens vaginal dryness infertility because we cannot produce the ovulation mechanism we need the gonadotropins onto the ovaries to produce the ovulation so we are infertile bone loss why estrogens estrogens activates osteoblast this is the main cell of the bones that creates bones and produce bones so we don't, when we don't have enough estrogen osteoblasts are silent and we lose we lose bone our bones are brittle and low quality. We don't have strong resistant bones. Galacturia. What is galacturia? Okay, galacturia is a nipple discharge of milk. As we said before, prolactin main function, prolactin main mission is to produce milk in the mammary gland, a modified apocrine gland. So when levels exceed the normal, the normal levels, it's, it's not very frequent, but in 20% of women with high prolactin levels, we can find a galacturia that is a nipple, involuntary nipple discharge of milk, even when she's not pregnant. And loss of libido and sexual drive is very, very common. Okay, that's in premenopausic women. Now we are going to consider what happens with postmenopausic women. Postmenopausic women are already hypogonadal. That means that they don't have menses anymore. Okay? And they have already low concentrations of estrogens and progesterone. 
so we don't have that alarm that alarm symptoms to show us that something could be happening with prolactin and commonly we find high levels of prolactin in a blood test performed for other reason or in a magnetic resonance performed for other reason an image test performed for other reasons in the case that the cause of high prolactin is a micro or macro prolactinoma in next video we will talk about the prolactinoma what it is what are the symptoms that it can cause what are the treatment and everything so if you like this video we will make another video talking about the prolactinoma right 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 now that we have covered premenopausic women and postmenopausic women we will cover what happened in males males are a little bit different but but what we feel with high prolactin levels is infertility of course because as well as FSH and LH hormones are designed to produce estrogen and progesterone as well are designed to produce in the testicles testosterone and testosterone is essential for spermatogenesis so we are infertile because we don't have enough spermatogenesis the process of spermatozoid production we have low libido and low sex drive and that makes us really angry we have mood disorders we are angry every time low energy because of lack of testosterone Gynecomastia, what is gynecomastia? It's enlargement of breast in men, in males. Enlargement of mammary gland, a normal mammary gland because we males don't have much mammary glands, not, don't have mammary tissue in, in, the, in the pectorals. So the high prolactin levels can enlarge the mammary tissue in males and when we have high prolactin levels over the years over the years over the years we can have l loss of muscle mass and loss of bone brittle bones even loss of hair okay but that will be caused by an hypogonadal state uh, over the years in and not in an acute moment okay that will be the consequence over the years and uh, long-term consequences voila that's the main consequences the main symptoms we can find when prolactin is high and we don't know about it okay in next videos we will talk about the causes of high prolactin what are the main causes we will talk about the prolactinomas and we will talk about everything about prolactinomas if you like this video i will keep uploading one video at least one video every week thank you for subscribing that means a lot for me as i said before my main content is in spanish that you, you will you will have noticed that my english is not very fluid and i have uh, pronunciation mistakes grammar mistakes i'm not perfect in english uh, i know <laughs> i'm from spain but i i try to improve every day with every video okay i try to convey to confer you value in every video okay value in every message free and quality content about medicine exercise and nutrition so that's it for today thank you for watching consider subscribing and see you soon keep strong and healthy